So what I like to do is I like to wrap these with this, um, this saran wrap stuff um, and then add bubble corners to it. And so this is just a little extra protection to protect all the corners inside of the crate. I mean, we're putting in a nice big crate, so it's going to have a really hard time to damage this after all the foam and everything that I put into it. Uh, I put a pretty considerable amount of foam in my, at least two or three layers worth of foam inside each one of these crates. I'm a little overkill with my stuff at times. As far as the wrapping, I tend to put about three, but I make sure that all the all the frame is completely uh, wrapped all the way around so it's protected. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put it inside the crate. I'm going to see if I can work it up here. Take our lid off. This one was already ordered, and how I ordered these was I ordered them by inside dimensions. You know, a lot of people make their own. To me, it makes no sense for me to just to order to have someone else build it by the cost and the mar the little margins that they have on top of the box. It's just me personally, my time's worth a little more, so I have a love to keep these other local businesses busy. So we got our first got lid off. And whenever I order these frames, um, you know, these frames are 50 by 50. And so what we're going to do here, this one, um, I had a layer for another canvas that we ended up not shipping out. And so where we had some walls cut with holes for the texture. So we'll save this and use that on another job. But we've already got our, our little framing in here, or our little foam. Now it is ready to put in this big, beautiful crate. Wingspan, so I can slide this right in there. And this frame is smaller than the other one, so we're going to cut a little more foam to put inside this one so we can fill up these gaps. This is styrofoam brand Res residential sheeting insulation. It's got a about a four, four R value. So I like to use this stuff because it's fairly inexpensive. It's about you know twelve to fifteen dollars a piece. It provides about an inch worth of foam and, and padding. And I'll use the box as a straight edge. Don't cut your fingers. That is self-explanatory. You never know if someone will do that. How you do it? You know, I did it just like you did, but you, I cut my finger off. Cut two little strips should be enough. Put it back. Yes. The top. There we go. Pretty snug. This one you want to be as exact as you can with your top layer. Okay, so now I got my straight edge. Bend it, snap it, cut it. We're going to add one more layer. And we're going to use the pink foam because it's not as thick as the blue. So you, want to, you want it to fit in there as tightly as you can. So this with the other foam should be just about perfect. And okay, we're gonna put our lid on. And this is just a quarter inch plywood. If they've had the seam, you can see they seamed it with a, about a three inch piece, or I guess this is three ply plywood. 
So it's probably what three eighths. And we go ahead and get it into place. Fits snug. So it's good. Now we come in and put our screws in. And this, since you're shipping it, you always want to make it pretty secure. And after you use it a few times, if you use the same holes and you drill into the same uh, part of the wood, it'll start stripping out so the lid can actually come off. So if you're using the same crate over and over, it's probably wise to flip your lid every couple of times. That way you're screwing in the new holes in the wood or making new holes in the wood and it lasts a little bit longer. I learned that the hard way whenever I shipped a crate back from New York and we had it, we'd been using the same holes and well, whenever they brought the crate in on the truck, the actual face was falling off of it and it was open and you could see paintings and it looked like they had dropped the crate, but I'm starting to think now that it probably had something to do with me not securing enough screws in it uh, more than them dropping it. It was so mangled or the crate was so bad that I had to unload the whole shipment on their truck while it was out on the street. And I think I had probably, you know, 25. I probably had 40 pieces in there at least. The whole booth, me and a few different artists. So yeah, I learned that lesson once, luckily. A few more screws and this one is getting picked up this afternoon. So I want to thank you all for joining and learning how to crate and ship one of your pieces. Uh, I, I use Pilot Freight Services. That's Pilot, P-I-L-O-T. Uh, they have offices all over the country, and I like them. They're pretty affordable uh, shipping manufacturer, so it's easy to get good bids with them. And they, they pretty much go most places from what I've seen. And... Uh, you know, pretty dependable overall. So, got a couple more screws here and we are done. But, and this one will be in Franklin by the beginning of next week. Thanks for joining us. Make sure to subscribe, uh, like, put the bell notifications on so you can learn more about what it takes to survive in today's art world. Have a good day.